Hi, Capricorn. Okay, so welcome to the channel if you're new. My name's Raji, if you are. Um, and welcome back, of course, if you are returning. So, I always start out. So, let's just, let's get right into it, Capricorn. I like that we're smiling in the beginning, that's good. Um... I am all bundled up today, even though I tech it, it's worth it. it. It it's necessary, and well, <sighs> having a hard time expressing yourself. <laughs> I guess this a scarf isn't exactly a blankie, but it it is comforting, right? Be sort of wrapped up, sort of swaddled, in a way, right? held, right? The soft thing is holding you. So, well, some of you are considering where it is that you live and maybe how long you'll live there. Excuse me. Um, Just a second. No, baby, it's okay. Some of you also don't want to let go of something, um because you're used to the sadness of it. What's that, uh, what's that Nirvana song? I miss the feeling and being sad. Right? Or I guess it's a lyric, it's not a song. Um, and why would he say that? Well, he'd say that because Sadness can be uh, like a blanket of sadness, right? A blanket of sorrow. You know, it, it becomes almost habitual, right? Um... What did I say before? Those of you who are here, like, take off that blankie and you get your machete and you just <laughs> handle it. You know, you get your dog and you and you just go see go see what the fuck's going on over there. You know what I mean? Whether it's your sadness, this is someone you thought you heard. You know, whatever. Might just be the cat shitting in the box. It could be, um, you know, some memory from childhood. It could be your ex-wife, your ex-husband. You know what I mean? It could be just your feelings like p popping up and scaring you a little bit. Um, but I think for most of you, the, the sadness and all that, um, I think the main postmark is is some sort of like past relationships. You know what I mean? People that. Um, things that you desired, right? You desire, I see that you desire something very strongly right now, too. You're thinking about what you want. And I see that you're willing to go get it, which is cool. You know, it's funny, Capricorn, look what we just did right there. We were talking about heavy stuff, right? And then we became practical, which is cool, um, and went into this m more sort of, the word progressive is coming, but it's, um, 
it's creative, right? Um, but, but there is a question to how emotional you let yourself become about the things that have happened because you have to tap into them because they're still here, right? You have to, you're the only person that can do that for you right make you if you are sad about anything or if there is anything that still scares you or whatever happened with your family right the one you made or the one that you came from I guess there's also something, it's commitment with you, right? It's commitment to things. Uh, so what are we talking about? Loyalty? But if someone breaks, uh, if someone breaks the commitment or says that they'll do something and then does not, right? Um, well, there's a dishonesty, which I guess goes back to trust. Which may, for some of you, halt you from truly connecting to yourself emotionally because you kind of don't want to go there. Um, because... So, okay, so if you're all about commitment, but say, for instance, you change your mind, right? I just recorded Leo. We talk about this all the time. I guess it makes sense. So say you're really committed to something, but then you change your mind, Capricorn. Do, do you see yourself then as, uh, as unloyal, as dishonest, as untrustworthy? I guess in the question, in addition to that, is when, how do I see it, uh, how stubborn are you with admitting how you really, when your feelings actually change about something, and then expressing them, uh, Because I'm sensing this, like, fixed energy where you, once you stick to something, you're involved, you're dedicated, you're committed, you, you, you know, l l let's use an example, for instance, you, you have a job, you're there for a really long time, but then you start to you feel inside of yourself like you're not that happy about it or it's start your feelings are starting to change about that situation but then you stay there because you've you've already made this like comfortable kind of place that to settle that you've settled into right and you know what the rules are and you know where the boundaries are and you know how to handle everything and this that and the third uh so where do you stay in situations just because you feel this unconscious or subconscious kind of dead uh, I just keep seeing someone putting the like those one of those wax seals you know what I mean it's just you're there uh, and how do you break away from that it, because how you do that in physical life that you rule the earth the physical world right H however you do that in physical life with your relationships with your jobs with your friends with your whatever your interests even it's like well that will be a direct reflection of how you do that emotionally right there's an emotion you don't like there's this five of cups right it's like well do you just stay committed to that Again, you miss the feeling of being sad. You know, because maybe some of you too could be, you know, you can be attracted to people who are sad. I mean, I was just telling Leo again, but the same difference. And, and I guess this could be very heart-related, right? Un uncover your heart to solve the riddle. So, so 
It's not one chemtrail today. You can't go anywhere yet because you're not supposed to. Scorpio has something to do with this. Um, I do see fixed energy, so I guess, uh, which is Scorpio, Taurus, Aquarius, Leo. Um, someone's not talking to someone anymore either. Not really, like the communication's a little bit rocky. There's a little distance between people. People are in different pages, I guess, different places. You know, we're in Scorpio season two. Venus is in Scorpio. Mercury is Scorpio. Mercury is retrograde. You know, we got Sun in Scorpio. The Moon will be in Scorpio. Which is really intense energy, you know. And it's it's heavier, you know. It, it it anything that's in Scorpio in your chart or wherever Scorpio is, it's very, it's a challenging, it's a beautiful place, to me. I I perceive it this way. It's a beautiful place, you know. But you really have to be so honest, because if you don't, you bury yourself. Right, you put yourself in a hole. And it's really hard to get out of that hole because you just keep going down. And there's no end to it. You know what I mean? So you have to be, when, when you're honest though, there's no fear that you'll fall in the hole because you are communicating honestly about what is over. Um... Right, you're no longer defensive about anything or protect overly protective about anything. You know what I mean? Like someone brings up something or confronts you about something or whatever, and you you don't get on the defense. You know what I mean? You don't you don't you don't plan. You you're, you have your plan of attack. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you don't just uh, subconsciously distance yourself, right, from people from these situations, from yourself, or even your emotions, of course. Uh, and I know, I see again, you don't want to think about them for some reason. You don't, you, you, you are thinking about them, and then you're kind of like, oh, I'm done thinking about that. I don't want to think about it anymore. I want to, I want to start again. Uh, but I think part of the things that you can't start yet, or is because you haven't learned something yet uh and emptied out everything emotionally about the situation although i do see maturity here emotionally um but it it's something where it's like inside of you but i don't know if you can communicate it yet right no not yet um because you're becoming a new you, right? Let's not forget that. You're becoming a new you, you know? Especially Capricorn rising, it, it's, it, you know, it, but overall, it, it's... When you're redefining things like that, you gotta go slowly, which I know that you don't mind, which is good, but you can be stubborn. Because this is the thing, so when you're becoming a new person, right? Then you're not going to fit into all the places that you fit into before. 
you're not going to vibe with all the same people. You know? Um, you're, a lot of you probably even had major relationships that have kind of s separated, right? You, you've distanced yourself from people and places and things. Um, and for some of you, that was intentional because you know that was the best thing for you. Others of you, it happened and you the the thought process process behind it was you know I don't know why that happened but if you're in that position it's very important for you to consider and know why those things happened right not just when we've talked about this before no blame game right not not what the other person did per se it's what was your position in that and what did you need to learn right because it's that's the point right and and that's a beautiful scorpionic point to make you know what i mean that's how you don't find uh you know you, you there's there's no way you can miss the feeling of being sadness of sadness of being sad because you know what that feels like and that fucking sucks you know what i mean like sure it makes beautiful poetry and and it can be very inspiring in a kind of way if you can channel it right but and there's a reason for that it's an emotion so we're supposed to be in that sometimes throughout our life and we probably will throughout our life in these little ways sometimes big ways but it's not meant to uh, where you go down and down and down and down and down you know that's that's um that's not where there's a reason why there's an up and a down and a left and a right It's never supposed to be just one way. You know what I'm saying? So. Because I would probably say that from, I see that any relationship that you've had that didn't work is because any connection you had, thing that you were connected to that didn't end up continuing, say, now at this point, for the most part. I mean, if someone died, that's a different situation, but I'm saying, like, everything still exists as it did, but you and that thing don't exist together anymore. Well, it's probably, well, there was obviously things to learn, I mean, but you could stay together and learn. It's it usually, well, two things. One, you usually separate because there's people aren't learning anymore or you learn the lesson that you were supposed to learn or at least gather the information accordingly so that you can move on to the next step the next place right and when that's uncomfortable is because you don't want to because you don't, you think that the other thing is the purpose of why you're supposed to be there instead of the lesson right um in addition Part of the reason why that didn't work, say, particularly with, like, relationships, you know, marriages, long-term relationships, whatever, friendships, things like that, even family members, the difficulty in there is because one or both parties uh, were sad, right? They weren't happy in it. Because what do they say? Misery loves company right? That's what we do. But anything loves, we can put anything in that first word and does, you know, love loves love, you know, hate loves hate. Hate loves company. You know what I mean? Like think about, look at the, look at our position politically or whatever, like on the television, as propaganda, like people love to hate, you know what I'm saying? Like, but people also love to love and and some people love being sad and, um, you know, because our top five people that we hang out with, it's, I would say this is a proven fact through ever since I discovered this supposed, uh, what do you call that? Uh, I can't think of the word, but the point is, is that you, the top five people you hang out with are a direct ref reflection of you, you know? It's not going to be 100%, but it's going to be pretty close, you know. If you're sad, you're going to hang around sad people. You know, you're drunk, you're going to hang around drunkards, you know. For the most part, these major things that define and identify who a person is, you know. And when you don't become that thing or you change and you grow and you realize and you become honest about what has what is no longer then you're not going to, again, vibe with 
other people. You're going to be like, oh, whoa, I don't, I don't, I used to hang out, you know, uh, I just saw someone having conversation with someone else and saying something like, you know, we knew each other for like 15, 20 years, but you know, one day I hung out with them and it just, I didn't, I just didn't want to be there. It was like everything about it was like, ugh. You know, it just completely turned them off and completely, and it's supposed to turn you off. It's like an energetic, like, protection, right? Scorpio, that's another beautiful thing to have in the center of your reading. And Scorpio is in high vibration, and their reading's really beautiful this month, too, which, because it's their birthday season, um, it's their sun season, it's, uh, it's powerful for everybody, so feel free to watch that, um, especially being in the heart of your reading. But it's a beautiful energy. It really is. You can learn so much through that. I mean, they're really hard lessons and they're not comfortable, you know, but it's, it's once you learn them, you really do elevate. You really do come out of some space. You no longer go down, 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 but you, you come up and you realize, but the only reason why you can appreciate what, what is up here and how bright that is, is because of seeing the difference, you know, it's like if you've never gone without food this is why i think fasting is so important too plus it actually cures cancer and all that kind of jazz but like uh if if you never have gone without food then you don't really know what it means to starve you know or to to be you know famished and if you haven't ever felt, you know, the sadness, maybe we wouldn't be as appreciative of, of all the light or, or, or realize more about faith or the, the concept that things really do happen for a reason, you know. And that's part of scorpionic energy in this time, you know. I guess it's a big lesson for you. That doesn't mean that every Scorpio you're going to meet, by the way, it, or, you know, in your chart is elevated like this. It needs, everyone needs to work on that. And, you know, and again, that, that, that situation is something that is always growing. You know what I mean? And, and sometimes it's, it can be, you know, kind of a, a precarious journey, you know, and that's okay too. But because you're earth and you're the mountain, you are stable. You know, you you can take that commitment and that dedication, use it productively, you know. But but for you to be truly productive and 100% authentic in yourself, you have to tap in cancer's your opposite, the moon is your opposite. You you um but that opposition gives you a, an open road. You know, it's not, there's no roadblock there. You can go over there whenever you want to. You know, it's, it's just how comfortable or safe do you feel, right, in that. And I actually see for most of you some root chakra uh, work or just even like holding your hand there you know, giving, giving that part of your body attention, like positive, loving attention, you know, maybe when you say to yourself, like, I'm safe and loved, I'm protected, you kind of hold, you know, that area, you know, and just kind of, again, put some, put some energy there, you know, so that you know that you're stable you know what i mean so that you you feel like the cornerstones are there you know that and they're not going anywhere it's and that you are you are free to to you know i heard you're free to go you know you're free to go Yeah. You're free to go. I really see, um, when it comes to, say, any of you who are considering moving, or again, where you might live in the future, or just the future in general, I guess, overall, um, try not to think, and I know this is a little, maybe a little challenging for you, but try not to think too much about it. It's right now, it's like, 
there is preparation that's needed um, It's almost as if, if if you take up this time to check in emotionally with these places that need to be attended to and given a little bit of attention, then you'll end up exactly where you need to be, where there's like an opening. You know what I mean? For now, it's almost just like you're on one, you're on one road, but there's no path, right? You can't exactly see the path, but you're on the road. Does that make sense? And so take this downtime because maybe you feel like you have downtime in a way and if you do for some reason well then again do the things naturally that you need to do take care of the house right like where i live like you know you gotta sweep the chimney and you know stack the wood and all this kind of stuff and prepare for the winter if it's spring obviously you're planting your gardens and there's a lot of things to i hope you are grow your own food before they turn off the electricity and we're fucked anyway but the point is is that you want to make sure that all that stuff's in order, you know, and then, again, take, if you have a little extra downtime, well, work on that emotional place because that is part of what gives you the opening, right? It's like once you drain out that water, you open that valve and you sort of assess it and make sure there's no clogs in there, then it actually shows you, I just saw this water leaving, it like drained out and then you realize like, oh, I'm on, you were like standing at this huge water, like this huge water source, like a big huge lake and you couldn't, it was just a lake as far as you could see and you know you weren't supposed to write what we talked about, you could feel the past behind you, right? You can feel it in your bones, you can feel it in your soul, you don't want to go back there. So don't, uh, and how you don't is again, you, you do this emotional work and the water just whoosh, left. And then there was this path right down the middle, you know, so don't, I heard don't sweat it. Good messages. I'm glad it's a clear day. There's this awesome astrologer, by the way, if you want to check him out, if you like astrology. His name is Wakey Wakey, W-A-Y-K-I, twice, uh, Mark Knight. Um, he's fantastic, but uh, <laughs> hilarious. But he was talking about with the chemtrails, because obviously we all, well, most of us have are aware of them and um, have our theories about it. Oh, there's one, fucker. Uh hi lizard um but he was saying that maybe when there aren't any is actually because the stars are always there right we just can't see them because they're daytime or so i'm presuming um but this is where when we can have these beautiful energies like you know trines or sextiles or whatever it is and use that you know or even these squares like use use this energy accordingly and really you know for I don't really care for the term download because it promotes AI and I don't believe in that. I think it's, and I know that it's wrong, but it's, um, you know, just maybe pay attention to that too. You know, look up to the sky, pay, pay attention to the weather, you know, pay attention to the seasons, pay attention to the plants. Like this is really critical stuff, you know, um, because in, yeah, it, it's 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 just a, a very crucial thing. And, and, and the thing that I guess makes it so crucial at this point is that we're so separated from nature, right? We're so separated and we're so wrapped up in our own feelings and, and because we're at this really beautiful place of healing, which is wonderful and everyone needs to do that. But it really is, like I told Taurus a, like two months ago, that was a heavy reading, but like, it, it really sp the spiritual place of healing is really only the first it's just the first step right there, there's so much more to do and maybe if you think about it in that way capricorn that'll help you not necessarily like push through it or rush it because you can't rush emotional things or anything really to do with capricorn or saturn but you can use it more efficiently you know what i mean so that you get further along uh in the best way you know what i'm saying and we need to know, you know, what's edible. We need to know what it, it, people, it, 
it was such a natural thing, you know, people, everyone knew the Latin names of everything, and, and, and understood what they were for, and, and when the seasons of animals, you know, like, when you're supposed to, you know, if you do hunt, or whatever, uh, you know, when that is, or very least, like, when things migrate, and, you know, just get to know, get to know where you are, because that'll help also you to understand your own natural processy, you know, like, how, how you work as an individual, and what you're releasing, and, and what's growing, and, and all that, and all of that. Didn't I tell you to go climb a mountain? I feel like that message came. If you live some near somewhere, even if you live in New York, you could take the you could take the train and the subway and, and go to upstate a little bit. You go to Bear Mountain, actually. That place is cool. Any of you are there. Um, you can actually walk from it from New York to Bear Mountain. It's cool. Found an old book on that. But um point is is that go climb climb literally climb a mountain or try to find maybe like the highest point near you you know what i mean i mean it just i feel like you need that perspective you also need that you get up there and you're like oh, all right i made it you know i made it i made it up here and it gives you like a different perspective you know and then realize well you gotta climb on back down right because there's things to do all right that's that Thank you for being here. Thanks for being patient and so loyal and dedicated and committed and caring and supportive. It's and emotional. Um, you know, because the thing is with that whole emotion to Capricorn, it's like you're obviously when it comes to you and emotion, especially like Capricorn moon, whatever, it's you're never going to necessarily communicate your feelings how in a way that's like really mushy you know what I mean I mean don't get me wrong sometimes it comes out right but you like squirt out the sides it's more about again just realizing how you work and then just being more aware of that and making decisions more accordingly and more honestly so that you can actually know when to stay committed to something when to stay dedicated and connected to something and when not and the places that have not or have again have distance well that's okay it's totally it's totally fine you know and the places that aren't quite disconnected yet but you know that you want to disconnect from them and you're aware of them well again capricorn saturn whatever you, you it's a slower process and so again just be okay with that you know what i mean the hermit just be okay with that process it's that it's slow and that it will actually happen um and keep faith about that you know I, and and take the appropriate action a little little steps at a time so that you can get where do you want get where you you know arrive where you would like to be okay thanks for all your support though really Happy you're here. See you later, Gator.